Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. Over the last few weeks, I keep hearing about the OBS NDI plugin, which is now available for Linux. So for the past few days, I've been installing and setting it up. I've been putting it through its paces. See how I got on after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So NDI, which stands for Network Device Interface, is a protocol that's been developed by NewTek, and they've made the SDK freely available. I'm not sure I'd necessarily describe it as open source, but um, yeah, at least the SDK is out there and people can work on it. And it's been around for almost five years now, but it only seems to be coming into its own about now. We have hardware providers um, bringing out new products such as cameras, uh, surveillance cameras that are NDI enabled, and we have the likes of Skype, for Windows anyway, uh, getting and the NDI abilities uh baked into it, and I believe there's even a plug-in for VLC. Again, the Windows version. I'm afraid that Linux at the moment seems to be the poor cousin because we're still in catch-up mode. There isn't a huge amount out there uh, that supports NDI in the Linux world. Maybe that's not such a bad thing because is it even any good? Well, I've been putting it through its tests the last couple of days. There is now an NDI plugin for OBS, which is available on Linux, Windows, Mac, and I've installed it, and I've been having a look at what it can actually do. And I'm relatively impressed, I'll say that now. At the moment, I think it's probably a bit overhyped, because although there's a lot of interesting hardware coming out, um, it's quite expensive. And really, its usefulness over a wireless network is perhaps questionable at the moment. Uh, it certainly was a little bit laggy over my wireless network. Nevertheless, you know, it's always good to keep abreast of these new protocols. So... I've installed OBS in Linux. I'm going to go through the process that I went through, and you can see what I've actually found out so far. So without further ado, let's get into it. On your screens, you should now see my desktop with Pamac fully open, and you can see that the version of OBS Studio that I have installed is 25.0.8-1. I've read in some places that uh, this only works with OBS Studio Git, this one down here. But I didn't actually find that to be the case. I found a smoother experience with the standard OBS Studio. I then went to the AUR. and Let me just uh, search for OBS NDI. And there's a few packages there. You've got four different packages. I've tried most of these while I've been setting it up. The one that I found worked the best for me was OBS NDI Git. So I've installed that. I've also installed, again, from the AUR, this particular package here, NDI-SDK. So the standard OBS Studio, NDI SDK, and OBS NDI Git, both from the AUR, they seem to work fine. If you're on a Debian or an Ubuntu system, I don't think they'll be in the repos yet, and I'm not aware if there's a PPA for Ubuntu, but you can go to the GitHub page of Palakis, which is Stefan, Stefan Lepin, sorry if I've butchered your name, Stefan, and uh, he actually has some pre-compiled binaries here and 
if you're on Ubuntu or Debian, you need to download two packages. Lib NDI 4-dev and the 4.9.0-1 version of the OBS plugin. Once you've got them installed, you can then go about setting it all up in OBS. Right, so uh, you've installed the plugins. You've got OBS actually set up. The first thing to do to check everything's working is to go to the Tools menu, and you should see an option there for NDI output settings. And you've got two options that you can enable simply by ticking the main output and the preview output i've not found much of a use for ticking the preview output uh, myself this would output two streams of whatever you're viewing in obs um, i'm told that the preview output can be useful if you're in studio mode so that you can see just a preview of your screen but generally speaking I would simply take the main output and click OK. That would then set up the transmission of the NDI signal from OBS, and it would be available to pick up from another OBS on another computer. Now, as well as the main output on the toolbar, there's another way you can do it. You can leave that unticked, and you can go down to your scenes and add another scene. So let's just create a, a scene called NDI. Okay. And just add something here. Let's do screen capture. So my main screen. Okay, there we go. I can then go over to the NDI scene and go to filters. And you will see there that there is uh, an option to add a dedicated NDI output to that, uh, that particular scene. And as long as you have this scene activated, another uh, computer would be able to pick this up. Okay, so all good there. Let me just go into my filters again. And I'm just going to take that off for the time being. Now, the other way is that you can also receive things. So if you go into your sources, and you will notice here on the sources that you have an NDI source as an option. So if you click on that, the source name box you can actually pull down. So I've got Anarchy Dedicated NDI Output. I'm not quite sure what's on that screen, but we'll have a look in a second. I'm just going to my laptop here. And uh, let's see if that actually comes in. There you go. So obviously this is my X220 ThinkPad that I'm transmitting this from. And uh, the webcam is absolutely awful. So this is your standard uh, ThinkPad awful webcam. And as you can see, it's horrible. But I could obviously do it the other way around because the X220 webcam is so horrible. I could use the webcam that I have on this main computer and OBS on the X220 could pick that up and it would be a much better picture. In fact, just to show you, here's a recording of my X220 with my main desktop camera. So much better. So yeah, OBS NDI certainly seems to work. And I'm sure if you're a gamer and you want to reduce the load on your main machine, you can kind of spread that burden by just using one machine for the actual game itself and then another machine, perhaps your laptop, uh, to manage OBS and the streaming to YouTube or whatever else you're doing or, or to one of the other platforms. Has it got any other uses? Well, I can imagine it would be quite useful for me on some occasions when I'm using my laptop as the vehicle to do a review on a particular distro. 
at the moment I have to hook it up to a capture card. Uh, I wouldn't need to do that. I would just need to open OBS on the laptop, set it up as a an NDI transmitter, if that's the right word, or NDI output, and I can just pick it up in OBS and, and run through it. So it has some uses. But what else? What else could it be used for? Well, one of the things I've been playing with is using a phone as a webcam to see how that actually works. Especially if you've got a computer like the little X220 that I've just shown you that has an appalling webcam. Most phones these days have brilliant cameras. Is that going to be any better? Is that going to be usable? Well, I've got an iPhone at the moment, and there's a free app, and I'll give you the details and everything in a video description. There's a free app from New Tech for setting up your iPhone as a webcam. Let me show you how it looks. So this is a camera app, a HD, NDI camera, should I say, from New Tech. I've not brought audio over with this. It was very, very laggy and out of sync. But as you can see, it's not too bad. And this is a second app, um, OBS Camera. This seems to have less lag on it. This is a paid version. One thing I haven't managed to do on any of these, though, is to be able to bring the audio over. So I'm just recording this on my standard microphone. Maybe that's what you're meant to do. It's a bit laggy again. It would be better if it wasn't attached to a wireless network. Okay, so that was a quick test of uh, phone camera apps. Um, it's a shame about the audio. I can actually see it in OBS as a source, an extra microphone source. And as I'm speaking into the phone's microphone, I can see it going along there, picking up the volume. But it doesn't record. And going into the settings for OBS, there doesn't actually seem to be an output to set it as an audio source, which is a shame, really. Uh, I'm thinking of doing a few more kind of vlogs later on when I get back to work. And I bought myself this little uh, Rode camera, uh, camera microphone. And uh, it's really good. But anyway, let's just put that aside. So uh, <laughs> that's OBS NDI. Is it useful? Um, I think it depends whether or not you could find a use for it. For me, it will probably be occasional when I'm looking at the laptop to do a review. Uh, and I would just use it instead of a capture card. But you may well find the webcam to be useful, the web the webcam facility to be useful. And if you're a gamer, I can understand how you would use it for that. Is it overhyped? I think it is at the moment, but I get the feeling that it's one of those technologies that's just going to grow and grow and grow. Currently, on Linux, we, we don't have a huge amount of applications that support it. And even on Android, uh, it's starting to lack. It seems to be very much based on Windows and uh, Mac. I mean, I'm just looking here on my iPhone. The new tech's camera app is called NDI HX. And that was okay. It, it was much more laggy than uh, the paid for app. But I, the one that was slightly better was Camera for OBS Studio, which was a paid for app. But I could see that the, the audio was way out of sync. But when I tried to record it on both of those, it wouldn't record. So, hey, you know, um, maybe that's just something that's going to happen in the future. But I can imagine that would be out of sync anyway. On Android, I believe there was this new tech camera app, but it's been pulled from the Play Store. Hopefully that comes back and it's just to update it or something. But at the moment, it's largely a Windows or a Mac thing. So, interesting to play. Um, it's good to see us get this functionality, and the plugin works really well on OBS. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> 
uh, I'd quite like to show you what I've been doing over the last few days, and I've been playing with this, so I hope you found it interesting, if only to get it installed and have a play yourself. Don't forget, join me on Library People, and we also have the Facebook group, but for now, I'm going to call it a day. I'll see you at some point next week. I am working for a few days next week, so there's likely to be not quite so many videos, but uh, I, I will see how the week pans out. Have a great day and stay well.